Good evening guys, today is 19th March and this is Daily Current Affairs brought to you by NEOIS. And our topics are United Nations Environment Assembly, National Anti-Doping Agency that is NADA, Kaitosan and Operation Sunrise also Kaladan project and our usual sessions MAP and PQRS. And our very first news is about the United Nations Environment Assembly, United Nations Environment Assembly or UNEA. We, are, we know about the UNEP and this is UNEU. And this is in news because the fourth meeting of the United Nations Environment Assembly was held in Nairobi, that is in Kenya. Fourth meeting was held in Nairobi, Kenya. Even the third meeting was in the Nairobi only in 2017. And the fourth meeting is in 2019, that is also in the Nairobi. And coming to the UNEA, UNEA is the world's highest level decision making body in, in the matter of environment. It is the highest level decision making body in the matter of environment formed in 2012 in a bid to strengthen the UNEP. And actually the UNEA or United Nations Environment Assembly is nothing but it is the successor of the governing council of the UNEP. We know about the governing council of the UNEP. That was the uh, governing body of the United Nations Environment Program. And the UNEA or United Nations Environment Assembly is the governing body of the uh, UNEP now. Earlier the governing council, earlier the govern, governing council was there. Now UNEA is the governing body of the UNEP and the body was formed in 2012. Earlier in the governing council only 58 member states was there. But in the UNEA or the environmental assembly, it has a universal membership. Almost 193 member states are also members of the UNEA. Usually the UNEA meets biennially, that is once in two years, and in order to develop the international policies and laws globally. So our news is about the United Nations Environmental Assembly. The fourth meeting of the UNEA was held in Nairobi, Kenya. Even the third meeting was in the Nairobi only. And is the world's highest level decision making body on environment was formed in 2012 and it is a successor of the governing council of the UNEP. Now the members, it has a universal membership of almost 193 members and it usually meets biennially in order to discuss and develop various environmental policies and issues. And our next news is about the National Anti-Doping Agency that is NADA. Recently the BCCA that is Board of Control for Cricket in India has the first time agreed to have a limited association with the NADA. They agreed, BCC agreed to have a limited association with the NADA. That's why NADA is in use. Coming to NADA, NADA as the name suggests, it is an agency for anti-doping in sports. That is, it is a national organization for promoting, coordinating and monitoring the fight against drugs in the sports. In the sports field, we know, we know about the doping, various doping issues. NADA is working against these doping or coordinating and monitoring the various drugs associated with the sports or various usage of drugs associated with the sports or they are against the doping. And the NADA or uh, this agency is formed by the union government and registered under the Societies Registration Act. Also NADA have anti-doping rules as the, uh, the function of the NADA is to give anti-doping rules that is in conformity with the World Anti-Doping Agency that is WADA. So in, in national level, NADA is the agency which controls the doping in sports. Whereas in the international level, another agency called WADA, WADA, that is the agency controlling the, controlling and monitoring the use of drugs in sports or, or the doping. So coming to WADA, WADA is the World Anti-Doping Agency and it is a foundation initiated by the International Olympic Committee. We know about the International Olympic Committee. WADA is founded by the International Olympic Committee, headquartered in the Montreal that is in Canada and established in the year 1999. And our NADA, that, that is National Anti-Doping Agency, works in con conformity with the principles of the World Anti-Doping Agency. And NADA is in news because the BCCI has agreed to have a limited association with the NADA in some cases. And NADA is agency which is responsible for monitoring and coordinating the acts against drugs in, in sports or against the doping. And the agency is registered under the Societies Registration Act. 
Also, the international agency to deal with doping is the World Anti-Doping Agency or WADA. It is formed or initiated by the International Olympic Committee and the headquarters is in Montreal, Canada, formed in the year 1999. Only this much facts are important for your prelims point of view. Now, we are more focusing on prelims point of view than the mains. So, you just need to focus on some important points other than other than reading so much things. Okay. So, only this much is important for your prelims point of view. And our next news is about the Kytosan. Kytosan, not Cetosan, it is Kytosan. And Kytosan is a natural polymer which is obtained from the chitin. Which is obtained from chitin. Chitin is nothing but it is a polymer. It is a polymer which is present in the shells of the crustaceans. We know about crustaceans. Crustaceans are uh, the having uh, organisms having exoskeletons such as crabs, lobsters, shrimps, krills, all these kind of species have exoskeletons. So, chitin is a polymer which is obtained from the exoskeletons of these crabs, lobsters and krills and uh, other type of crayfish. Chitosan is obtained from this chitin or uh, chitosan is manufactured from this chitin. And chitosan has a number of commercial as well as medical uses. Now, we are going to look upon the various uses of the chitosan. Firstly, chitosan can be used in seed treatment, seed treatment and a biopesticide in agriculture. We know what is the usage of pesticides and uh, chitosan is a biopesticide that does not harm the agriculture or environment. So, it can be used as a biopesticide and also used in seed treatment. Seed treatment is uh, nothing but some chemicals, biological or physical or uh, some chemical substances are added into seeds in order to protect them before planting. So, the health of a seed is very important in case of the health of a plant. So, we are protecting the seed by adding some of the chemical substances. That kind of process is called as the seed treatments. So, chitosans are used in the seed treatments as well as in the biopesticides in agriculture. And other uses includes the, it acts as a fining agent, fining agent and preservative in wine making. We know about the preservatives. Nothing but you just need to know they are used in wine making. Chitosans are used in wine making. And other another use is that they are useful in bandages because they have the antibacterial properties. They have the antibacterial properties. Thus, they are used in bandages. Recently, IIT Guwahati found find that multiple uses of chitosan. One as an oil repellent and other as a water repellent. That is, uh, we, you, we can use the chitosan in order to avoid the oil spillage or in order to tackle the oil spillage. Now, the IIT Guwahati found that chitosan has two kind of properties. One, it can separate the oil. It can act as an oil repellent, also water repellent. In a common oil-water mixture, by use of chitosan, we can either separate the oil or otherwise we can separate the water. Anyway, uh, chitosans are used in oil spillage in order to avoid the, in order to tackle the issue of oil spillage, chitosans are used. Another usage is that chitosans gel can be used to protect the agricultural workers from harmful pesticide spray. That means when some agricultural worker is spraying some pesticides, it may affect his health or skin. So, when he applies the chitosan gel in his skin, he can protect himself from the harmful effects of the pesticide spray. So, our news is about the chitosan. Chitosan is nothing but it is a natural polymer which is obtained from a material called chitin which is also another polymer available in the exoskeleton of the crustaceans. And chitosan has a many number of usages. It is used in seed treatment that is the, uh, uh, this chitosan is added to the seed for the protection of the seed before planting and also used as a biopesticide in agriculture. It is also used in wine making. The, it is used in medical fields such as ba bandages because of the antibacterial property and it can be used to remove the oil spillage and all. And another use is that uh, it can be used, uh, the gel of chitosan can be used to protect agriculture workers from the harmful pesticide sprays. And our next news is about the Operation Sunrise and Kaladin project. Recently, the Indian and Myanmar army jointly carried out some anti-terror operations in the border. We have, we and the uh, Myanmar army jointly carried out anti-terror operations in the Myanmar into Myanmar border. And the name of the operation is Operation Sunrise. The operation's name is the Operation Sunrise. 
and the main terror outfit in the Myanmar's Rakhine province is the Arakan army. We know about the Arakan mountains or Arakan Yoma. Arakan army is an insurgent group which is present in the Rakhine state, Rakhine state of Myanmar. Rakhine state is very infamous for the Rohingyas issue anyway. And uh, the Arakan army is found in, they are insurgent group or extremist group in the Rakhine state and they are making some difficulties in the multimodal Kaladin multimodal transit transport project. So we and the Myanmar army jointly made an attack in some bastions of the Arakan army. And we know about the surgical strike. In surgical strike, we crossed to the border. But in this Operation Sunrise, we did not cross to the border. We just provide some surveillance and equipment support to Myanmar to tackle the Arakan army. We did not cross to the border of Myanmar. We laid in our side and we provide support to the Myanmar. That, that is our joint military operation, Operation Sunrise, in order to tackle the terror outfits in the uh, terror outfits in Myanmar, specifically Arakan army. Because the Arakan army is disturbing our Kaladin project. And coming to the Kaladin project, we know that it is a joint initiative of India and Myanmar and it is a multi-model transport transit project which connects the eastern ports of India towards Myanmar. And one of the main objective is that it will provide sea connectivity, sea connectivity to the various northeastern regions of India. Earlier, we have to pass through the Siliguri corridor or chicken neck in order to reach the northeastern area, which is a very congested track and the distance that should be traveled is very high when compared with the while choosing the way through Myanmar. When we are moving from Kolkata to Mizora, it, it would be very difficult to reach through the Siliguri corridor. But when we are bypassing through the Myanmar, the distance is also reduced and the northeastern areas will get a sea connectivity. That is the Kaladan port, with the Kaladan port. That are the main objective of the uh, Kaladan multimodal transit transport project. Now, the Arakan army is disturbing our, the, our Kaladan project. That's why we defeated or we attacked the some bastions of the Arakan army. And on MapEdu program, we have a location related with the Kaladan multimodal transit transport project that is the Sithwe port. And Sithwe is located on the western coast of the Myanmar. It is in the western coast of the Myanmar in the mouth of the Kaladan river. So, uh, it is located in the western coast. You can see the location. It is in the western coast of the Myanmar in the mouth of the river Kaladan. It is also the capital city of the Rakhine state of Myanmar. Actually, Sitwe is the capital city of the Rakhine state. Now, we are going to learn about the multimodal project. The first phase is from Kolkata to Sitwe. We learned about Sitwe and from Kolkata to Sitwe, it is almost 540 kilometers. We use the transportation that is by sea or shipping. The 540 kilometers is covered by shipping. And next stage is from Sitwe to Paletwa. You can see Sitwe, you can locate the Sitwe and Paletwa. Both are in Myanmar. And Sitwe is a port. And from Sitwe to Paletwa, I already told you Sitwe is in the mouth of the river Kaladan. The transportation is done through the river. Or the, the transportation from Sitwe to Paletwa is through the river Kaladan. And it is a kind of inland water transport. And the distance is 160 kilometers. From Paletwa to Indo-Myanmar border, the road facility is used almost for 110 kilometers. And at the final phase, from Indo-Myanmar border to the Mizora, NH-54 is there. Just 100 kilometers of travel through NH-54 is sufficient to reach the various centers in the Mizora. By using this project, we can easily transport between the eastern ports of India, that is Kolkata to the northeastern region, bypassing the Myanmar and by avoiding the Siliguri corridor. Our next session is the PQRS in which we have a question from 2012 prelims. Which of the following is the chief characteristic of mixed farming? Option A, cultivation of both cash crops and food crops. Option B, cultivation of two or more crops in the same field. Option C, rearing of animals and cultivation of crops together. Option D, none of them. It is the simplest question under the sun <laughs> and you can easily answer the question. And the question is about the mixed farming. Mixed farming is nothing but 
in which the crops and animals are grown together in the same field at the same time. So, mixed farming, mixed farming means growing animals or rearing animals and keeping the crops at the same time in the same field. For example, growing some cereal crops along with the cattle or keeping cattle and growing the cereal crops that is a kind of mixed farming. So, the answer for the question is option C, rearing of animals and the cultivation of crops together. So, what about statement A and B? A is a cultivation of both cash crops and food crops. B, cultivation of two or more crops in the same field. The cultivation of two or more crops in the same field in the same time is called as the mixed cropping. So, you need to know about the difference between mixed farming. Mixed farming is mixing farming, different kind of farming. That is, one uh, we are growing crop at the same time we are doing, doing dairy or we are doing poultry farming. So, in the same time we are growing crop along with some animals, animals rearing, it is called as the mixed farming. As the name suggests, mixed cropping is related with crops. That is, different crops are grown at the same time in the same field. And mixed cropping is also called as the polyculture or intercropping. Both uh, these three are same. Mixed cropping is a part of polyculture and intercropping. That is growing different crops at the same time in the same field. For example, during the Rabi season in North India, we used to grow wheat, gram and mustard. Wheat, gram and mustard. Okay, it has got mainly two advantages. We are mixing, we are or we are doing mixed cropping of wheat, gram and mustard during the Rabi seasons in the or dry regions of the North India. And the main advantage, main advantage is that the loss of soil in nitrogen will be compensated by the gram. We know that the uh, benefits of growing gram. Okay. The uh, rhizobium and azotobacter and uh, different kinds of nitrogen fixation bacteria are there in the uh, various parts of the gram. The loss of soil nitrogen in the soil is replenished by the gram crop which fixes the atmospheric nitrogen. And secondly, just think that if the wheat crop did not succeed or wheat crop fails, then the farmer will get return from the gram and the mustard. So, these are the benefits of mixed cropping. So, you need to learn about the difference between the mixed farming and mixed cropping. So, I hope you learned about mixed farming and mixed cropping. So, the, the question is about mixed farming and the answer is option C, rearing of animals and cultivation of crops together. So, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. For detailed news and explanation, you can refer to the PDF which is provided in the description section. Keep watching to our channel. Please do like, share and comment below. Good night.